But yeah, so far the Hyper Crew is pretty much just a group of uh, real life college student friends trying to uh, get involved in esports. Uh, all of this is just done because we love it, love bringing you guys these matches, love casting these games. All of our prize pools just come straight out of our pocket. So we really do appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting us. Like I said, feel free to follow us on Twitter. Uh, I'm actually going to post a link to our Facebook here as well. And this game is counting down. But like us on Facebook. All that stuff, uh, you know, stay up to date with what we're doing. We do have a lot of great matches, um, you know, on a weekly basis. We do this show match every Thursday night at around 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, um, you know, every week we try to line up two really great players. Last week was FXO Optic Zero versus One Kai Hall. It's a great series. And uh, we have replays and all that good stuff available for download at hypercrew.com. You go to the StarCraft II section, the replays, there's a coaching section, uh, a lot of great stuff. So hopefully you guys are enjoying yourselves. You'll come back in the future and, uh, you know, check out the website. We really do appreciate it. And uh, we're going to start talking about this game now as we go in. So Janitor, as we see on Shakura's Plateau, the cross-map spawning positions, uh, you know, give us some of that Janitor insight you're so chock full of. Well, you know, I am definitely chock full of Chandler Insight, but uh, as I was saying before you returned, this is a very... Uh-oh, looks like we might be seeing a little bit of lag. Sin might be back there. He comes right back into this. But this is an interesting choice from Sin to go ahead and choose Shakura's Plateau. Shakura's Plateau is very, very hard to uh, do any kind of early aggression on, as we see very, very... Um, far distances, a far rush distance for most Zerg, and um, Destiny will feel very comfortable going for that early expand, but um, I, I've got to say, this is an interesting choice, and one thing that I do want to note on Shakura's Plateau, and on a couple of other things, um, you know, when you're on these, when you're on these very, very Spar, far spawning positions you see a lot of people just go for that early expansion and feel very very safe like we said in our last uh, show match we actually saw people go for Nexus first and that, that's just highly unusual and um, really you can get caught with your pants down a lot there looks like Destiny trying to do a little bit of pro press might actually get that SCV down no it looks like he's just going to have to back up um, uh, and a second barracks coming down and this is exactly what I was talking about Sin will be able to put on some pressure here it looks like uh, Destiny will end up scouting that so he's going to know that that is coming but we see that hatchery coming down first and it's going to be a little bit difficult to defend if Sin pulls off quite a few of those SCVs and tries to throw down bunkers he can actually do quite a bit of damage here and a lot of people don't expect it because it's on such a uh, such a long map. Yeah, and you know, this is an interesting map as well. Shakur's Plateau, I believe, is still temporarily out of the ladder map pool, uh, the Blizzard uh, ladder map pool, that is. But it is a pretty solid map. As most of us know, you can't spawn in the close ground positions. It is just not programmed into this map. So just by nature, this is a more macro-intensive map, which is one of the reasons I'm very fond of it. And, you know, not to be down on any of the brilliant map creators in the competitive community, but... Personally, I'm a little bit of a fan of the just Blizzard maps in general. I feel like Blizzard should have the upper hand in creating maps, even though that's not necessarily the case. So whenever possible, we try to give Blizzard the benefit of the, uh, benefit of the doubt as far as creating maps is concerned and making them balanced for the map pool. Um, but as you pointed out, with this particular map, a lot of players kind of expand very, very uncautiously, for lack of a better term. They'll just do that Nexus first, Hatchery first, without really scouting. As we saw in this match, uh, Destiny scouted exactly what Sin was doing, saw the double barracks wall off here, probably going to lead into a fast expand, which Sin is doing. So Destiny has a pretty good amount of intel. He has at least a general idea of what Sin is doing, and he decided to go that 14 hatch, 14 pool strategy anyway, because he feels comfortable. And there's a big difference between doing that based on some intel and just saying, well, we're on a macro map, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna 14 hatch, you know, that's, that's, that's what people do, right? And that's something that a lot of people sort of fail to notice, and that is huge. So Destiny should be prepared for any kind of aggression that Sin may put on, and as we see, he has two spine crawlers down. He didn't just do that willy-nilly, he did it because he saw what Sin has, he saw the barracks going down, and he knows early aggression is a possibility. And, uh, you know, that's what StarCraft is all about, reading your opponent and reacting accordingly, and Destiny is just uh, setting himself up to be in a good position in this match. Likewise, Sin is setting, some, setting himself up for a good position as well. He does have this uh, expansion coming up in a nice timely manner, and he will be able to keep up in a macro game um, if things progress as they have been this far.
Yeah, you're definitely right about that. Sin throwing down that double gas. You see three racks down already for Sin, so a lot of marine production, and that's uh, sticking with the theme of Sin so far. It's always interesting to see, though, what he adds on to that. You see the factory going down right now, but uh, it's I, I'm always intrigued by what Sin does um, as far as adding on to his high marine count. That's just been a staple of his currently. Uh, I've been watching some of his games just doing tons of and tons and tons of marine aggression and um yeah we're gonna see what that factory transitions into if he chooses to get those uh medevacs out to do some more dropping action we really haven't seen very many drops come out for sin uh this particular uh series so i, I will be interested to see how that transitions out into yeah. this game you know i completely agree we haven't seen enough drops from our terran player those Terran drops can be so deadly at really any stage in the game. The fast medevacs in that 1-1-1 strategy or even just some late game harassment. Kill a couple workers and then lift off is not to be undervalued. And I think that might be one mistake that Sin has been making in this particular series as far as utilizing medevacs to their full potential. Uh, we do see Destiny here getting this lair upgrade once again. Very quick, seems to fit into his style of play, just as uh, that pretty heavy marine army seems to fit into Sin's style of play. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that is so key to being one of these top-level players, is to have your sort of own play style that you feel comfortable with, that you feel you execute better than the other styles, and possibly better than most of those other players out there. And, you know, that's just... Once again, the signs of two strong players here in this series. We do see Sin dropping that uh, third, well, third command center, um, moving in for his third base. So he is going to be expanding very, very aggressively in this match. Looks like Sin did choose this macro map. This was Sin's map choice. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, this could be, uh, you know, interpreted as a Destiny's as a Destiny map choice. As this is a macro map and generally fits into Destiny's style of play. But Sin chose this. I would not be surprised to see this aggressive expansion continue in this match. Yeah, and an interesting choice here by Sin. You see him attacking his backdoor expand or those backdoor rocks. Uh, might be looking to put some early pre or, or some pressure on, excuse me, uh, in an unusual way. Looks like he's just going to be pushing back here. But Destiny has a very nice uh, zergling out here, scouting. Just going to see that uh, when those dis when those second set of destructible rocks goes down, if Sin chooses to push out there. In the meantime, Sin getting those siege tanks out, getting a siege tank number or a siege tank number up. And I like the choice here to go ahead and get that engineering bay down uh, very very early. Taking a look around into Destiny's base, he already has that. Um, that layer, or excuse me, that Baneling nest finished and a layer down as well. No spire in sight as of yet, but um, we really haven't seen Sin throw down too many turrets in this game. It looks like he's going to be uh, doing that a little bit more aggressively here, just throwing down those turrets and trying to deal with that. In the meantime, it looks like Destiny does have Burrow and he's going to be putting up his, uh, his Banelings for another huge explosion in the middle of the map. Yeah, and that's definitely a great thing to point out as far as Burrow is concerned. We did see that beautiful Baneling bust with Burrow on the, uh, in the Zell Naga game. I believe it was the second match in this series, uh, just crippling our Terran opponents. Looks like Destiny is gearing up for something similar to that in this match. As we pointed out, Sin working on his upgrades now has that Siege Tech completed. And does have Stim and Combat Shield completed as well, so he's doing a pretty good job as far as upgrading his units. He does have those two missile turrets finished, and we do see that poor little Overlord get taken out, and he's continuing up with this barracks production and, uh, you know, this tank production as well. Once again, Sin expanding very, very aggressively. Actually, ahead of his opponent as far as expansions are concerned, he does have this expansion uh, up and just starting to get running now, and we see Destiny just taking his third at the moment. So a little bit behind as far as expanding is concerned. Nothing too game-changing at this stage in the game, but generally Zerg players want to stay about a base ahead uh, of his or her opponent. So just keep that little tidbit in mind as this game progresses that our Terran player is just expanding very, very aggressively. We do see Destiny getting down this infestation pit. Obviously, you need that infestation pit to work on that hive tech, and I would not be surprised to see Destiny uh, get a hive before too long. We do see a spire down, or on the way for Destiny as well. Arshi blows right there. That spire is going to pop out before too long, and we are going to see some muta harassment.